Right guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today I'm in this 2018 Lexus NX300H. The NX has been around since late 2014 and it sits in the Lexus lineup just below the big RX and just above the weird clog-shaped UX. It's on par size-wise with the BMW X3 and the Audi Q5. It's become one of Lexus's best-selling models, and I can see why. It's a combination of several things, really. The fact that it's a good size, a reasonable price, the build quality is superb, and it's eco street cred. I bought this car a few days ago for stock. I wasn't particularly excited about it. I just thought it would be another mid-size Lexus SUV. But as soon as I got the keys and sat behind the wheel, I thought, I've got to do a video with this car. I was amazed by all of its technology and all of its features. The quality and refinement is on another level. This is the reason people buy these cars, and I think it's the main reason why Lexus customers are very loyal to the brand. I've seen loads of these on the roads recently, and now it all makes sense to me. We might as well start by talking about the thing which caught my attention in the first place, all of its impressive tech. The number of gizmos and gadgets this car has is enviable. The quality and the crispness of the display from the minute you turn it on is compelling. You've got the 360 camera, you've got the bird's eye view camera, which means you shouldn't ever curb a wheel ever again. You've got sat nav, cameras in the front, cameras in the back, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, heated seats, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, the list is endless. It's even under here, got this wireless charging point for your smartphone, which is that good. I don't think I've ever had a car with that feature before. Now I've had it, I think if I were in charge of the country, I would make it illegal for cars not to have that. You could live without all of these features, but it just helps to make modern life that little bit easier. The downside to all this technology is that it's a little bit difficult to figure out. I'll give you an example. I was on my way to work this morning and a song came on the radio which I liked. So I thought I'll play with the settings here and improve the turn up the bass and the treble. Anyway, it took me about 11 minutes to figure out how to do it. Not only had the song finished, but the DJ had finished his morning shift. Even Alan Turing couldn't master it. This one is a high spec premier model. Now this is the model that I would recommend because it's everything that you would want from a Lexus. You could go for inferior spec models, but they just really don't do any justice to the NX. Now this one's specced with a head up display system, which is excellent. It gives you all of the readings you could possibly want, along with a speed limit on the road and all that kind of information. And it just means that you never have to take your eyes off the road. Styling wise, I think it looks great. Everything is pin sharp. Everything's in proportion. All the lines are as straight as an arrow quite brave for a Lexus. It's not a pretty car in the same way that a Jag XK is, but I do think it's quite a handsome design. I know the big grille can be a little bit frightening at first, but when you get used to it, it's actually quite a, quite a bold look. As much as this car looks cutting edge with its pointy new nose and its chasing indicators, they're obviously trying to steer away a, a younger audience from the competition, but Lexus haven't forgotten who their core audience is. There are a few clues for this. For example, I've noticed this car has a CD player, a 2018 car that plays compact discs. Nowadays, that's pretty much unheard of, but it's an example of how well Lexus knows its buyers. In BMW and Mercedes of this era, it's all USB this and Bluetooth streaming that, but the Lexus is deliberately old school. Younger BMW and Mercedes buyers can stream their Professor Dre and their Shaggy Dog until the heart is content. Whereas a Lexus owner wants to be able to play their Max Bygraves and Glenn Miller CDs. You ask a Lexus buyer what a stream is, and they'll start talking about water and fishes. I've said this before in hybrid videos, but I do love the silence of hybrids. It's just really relaxing and calming. You drive this for half an hour and your heart rate slows down to that of a crocodile. There's something quite satisfying and rewarding about that. As you sit here whistling along in virtual silence, you know that you're not polluting as much as the car in front of you is. I mean, think about it. You get up, take the kids to school in traffic, drive to work in traffic, and then you park it up for eight hours and do the exact same thing, only in reverse. Your average speed is never much more than 11 miles per hour, so you never get a chance to discover that it's actually quite slow, and if you mash your foot into the accelerator, the CVT gearbox combined with the engine just makes a bit of a racket. But like I say, in heavy traffic, that's never really an issue. I could start talking about performance or whatever, but that would be missing the point of this car. This car is really all about safety, reliability, and comfort. So if those three things are high on your list, then look no further. Lexus knows that for 90% of the time, nobody cares about torque or how it handles around the Nürburgring. What they want is a comfortable seat, some nice extras, and quite a cheap fuel bill. And that's exactly what they've delivered. And that really is what puts the Lexus NX in a league of its own. Under the bonnet is a 2.5 litre petrol engine, which produces just shy of 200 horsepower, which is adequate. Again, performance never feels blistering, but it's not dangerously slow either. This is the hybrid version, hence the little H, the baby H. 
but they also do a two litre turbo engine which I've never driven so I can't really comment on how that is but really in the real world the hybrid makes a bit more sense you could buy this as a front wheel drive only car this one isn't this is all wheel drive which means that in addition to all of its battery and electronic witchcraft and wizardry you get an electric motor on each axle this means that it's quite a grippy car I mean don't expect it to be a serious off-roader because it isn't at all but in miserable conditions like this it's more than adequate if you even attempt to go green laning with it you will be calling for help roughly four yards from where you began it's a very safe car this you get loads of safety equipment as standard you get forward collision alert you get blind spot monitoring you get lane assist all the safety gear that this has would put a volvo to shame so onto the interior now the interior is gorgeous it's light and airy and bright and everything just feels of the utmost quality every single thing that you touch whether it's down here where you rest your elbow or down here where you rest your other elbow or the steering wheel all of the materials are superb the more and more time you spend it in the more you begin to appreciate how much effort and work's gone into it you can start to appreciate all the contrast stitching and the clever use of contrasting materials this one has the glass panoramic roof which was a thousand pound optional extra when it was new but if you're looking for a used one i would recommend looking for one with that because it just makes the interior feel so much lighter and brighter even on a dreary depressing miserable day like today it just feels quite nice and pleasant i love the design of the analog clock it's really classy and at night when you've got your lights on the way that that's backlit is excellent all of the leather they've used including the perforated leather on the seats is soft and supple all of the metal dials and knobs here are knurled it's almost bentley-esque it's just that much better than the competition something that is quite thoughtful down here they've got this little pop-out little vanity mirror so you can have a look at your smug face as you drive along in silence the driving position is very good too you sit up quite high so you have got a commanding view of the road there are no obvious blind spots the wing mirrors are nice and large everything's just easy to see and if you're struggling to see for some reason you have got a plethora of cameras if you own one of these and you manage to curb a wheel then you need flogging really there's no excuse for it as you stop in traffic and you get closer to the car in front you get all these cameras come on automatically showing you how close you are to the car in front and the car behind it's probably a little bit unnecessary but but it all adds to that feeling of safety now the actual interior space of this car is very impressive it's quite a tall car which means that it can accommodate the tallest of adults even in the back without taking up a massive footprint there's plenty of headroom plenty of legroom in the back the boot is a good size there's plenty of storage compartments i've got two cup holders up front you get two more cup holders in the back the glove box is enormous you've got deep door pockets in both the front doors it's a really thoughtful well laid out car everything just feels as if it's been properly engineered rather than just manufactured and nothing feels as though it's been done to a cost everything feels as though it's been done to a standard a high standard obviously even things like the door handles as you approach and put your hand on it and pull it towards you i know you all know how a door handle works but you can just feel the quality through it whereas with most other brands you do get the impression that eventually it will come off in your hand fuel wise you'd expect this to sip fuel like a camel wouldn't you well it's not as good as i thought it would be lexus says that it'll do 52 53 miles per gallon round town and on a motorway but the figures i've been seeing have been late 30s i think if you drove this really sensibly you could touch 40 or 42 miles per gallon but yeah nowhere near the 50 or 52 that lexus states that said don't be too disheartened by that because it's still better than the competition better than the x3 better than the evoke or the discovery sport better than the audi q5 but realistically in the real world you will be getting 10 or 15 percent fewer miles per gallon than officially stated the steering's very light and easy to use but it is a little bit vague performance is okay i mean none of this stuff really matters does it on this kind of car but i'll talk about it anyway it's not that quick but it's not dangerously slow as i said being all-wheel drive you get plenty of grip so as i go around these bends on a miserable wet day i never feel at risk or vulnerable now onto road tax here in the uk if you can find a pre-2017 model then it falls into the very low tax bracket if it's registered after april 17 then you will pay that standard fee of 140 pounds a year plus if the list price was more than 40 grand when it was new which this one is this one cost 45,000 pounds then there is a small surcharge to pay that's only payable for its first five years of its life then after that it drops down to that standard fee of 140 quid a year most of the time it's a lovely car to be in it rides really well until you go over a bump the minute you go over a speed bump just a little bit too fast the whole thing jars and you just bounce around it's not as bad as an rx but not as good as i'd hoped that's mainly caused by the car's weight due to all of its batteries 
and its ultra rigid body. I wouldn't say the ride's bad or excessively bumpy, it's just a little bit stiffer than I anticipated. So what's one of these going to cost you here in the UK? Well, used prices start at around £15,000, that's going to get you an early low spec model with Buzz Aldrin mileage. You really need to be looking at the £22,000, £23,000 mark for a nice one with sensible miles. This one's a one owner, two year old car with only 19,000 miles on the clock and this one's on for £30,000. Quite a big saving when you compare it to the new prices. I would definitely recommend going for a premier model. It's everything a Lexus should be. If you don't, you'll kick yourself. You could go for an F Sport, which looks a little bit sportier. You get panels as standard, but what's the point really? That is missing the point. If you want a sporty little SUV, then buy a, an X3 M Sport. But that isn't what this Lexus is about, so definitely go for a premier. You could buy a BMW X3, which will handle better without doubt, but won't be anywhere near as reliable. You could go for an Evoque or a Disco Sport, but it won't be as reliable. You could go for an Audi Q5, but you guessed it, it won't be as reliable. So if you're interested in keeping your family safe, saving some money on fuel, saving the environment, and being comfortable, and going everywhere in silence, then the NX really is the only one which you should consider. It's not all sunshine and roses though, there are a few little things I've found which do annoy me, such as the way the engine kicks in and out. Now on early Priuses, this was quite violent, so you'd sit there at a red light with the engine off, running on battery power, fine. Now without you knowing, the battery power would deplete and it would need the engine to kick in to top it back up, but that would happen quite violently. Now with this, they have improved it massively, but it is still noticeable, you can tell when the engine's running and when it isn't. My biggest gripe is the power lift tailgate, or the noise it makes, all Lexuses do this and it's just annoying, I don't know why they felt the need to do this. So I'll give you an example, you pull onto your driveway in silence, because the whole car is so quiet and refined and stunningly silent. Then you press a little button to open the power lift tailgate and then all of a sudden beep, beep, and then your neighbour's curtains start twitching. Why have they done that? The same thing happens when you lock it or unlock it. So you get out to your car at three in the morning because you've got to go to the airport for some reason. Everyone's still asleep. Your whole road is quiet. And all of a sudden you press the unlock button and then it makes the noise of a reversing dump truck. On every other car on the market, you press the unlock button and I can hear the door latches open or the lights will flash or something, which is fine. But on this, no, they've added an audible tone to it, which just annoys me. One other little thing, the boot button isn't illuminated once you've switched the engine off. So again, you pull onto your driveway at night, turn the car off, then you open your door, thinking, right, I'll just go and get my bits and bobs out of the boot, and you can't see where the button is. The button is that tiny and it's nestled amongst half a dozen other buttons that you end up having to get the torch from your phone just to see which button opens the boot. It's a little bit silly and surprisingly slapdash for Lexus. And one other thing, as good as the infotainment system is, they still haven't mastered this trackpad thing. It's still needlessly fiddly and complicated. With each generation it is getting better but it's still far too fussy, especially when you consider that Lexus's main demographic still view computers with suspicion. Apart from that though, it's a very clever, very pleasant car. It's certainly all the car you'll ever need. I prefer it over its big brother too, the RX, which I thought felt heavy, slow and the ride was too firm. So overall then, it's very high quality, very reliable, very cheap to run and, most importantly, you shouldn't get any hate mail from any Swedish teenagers. Coincidentally, I bought this on the day that the government announced their ban on the internal combustion engine, which I think is very optimistic and quite short-sighted, but we'll have to see how that plays out. A decade is quite a long time, I suppose, and the way things are advancing, we'll have to get there, I suppose. I was recently a guest on the Reinverted podcast. I'll leave a link to that podcast in the description of this video. If you haven't heard of Reinverted, it's a podcast dedicated to hybrid and EVs. So if you click on the link, you'll be able to hear the conversation that I had where I discussed hybrids and EVs and everything else in between. So thanks once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know and I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys. I'll see you next time.